the rock star of tech. Everybody in here has an Uber rating, and they, they, all, want to, they all want to say something to you. Um, Dara, it's great to have you with me one-to-one. -one. It's a real privilege. Um, the president was here on Wednesday night. Deep bench, and the bench of tech is really well represented. Tech is at the heart of this White House, surrounding this administration. How disruptive a four years for tech are we going to have? Well, I think it remains to be seen. I mean, technology has been disrupting our, the global economies for you know, years and years, right? Tech as a percentage of GDP has doubled over the past uh, 20 years. And I think what's different about uh, this administration is the active embracement of technology. You know, you look at uh, the US leadership uh, across the globe, much of that leadership comes from technology and technology's effect on different parts of our society. You know, started with information gathering with Google and then communication uh, with Facebook and entertainment, you know, the uh, Netflix and, and Spotify. And then it went to the physical world, you know, organizing the physical world, Uber, Airbnb, et cetera. What you're seeing now is this next wave of disruption powered by AI along the same patterning, right, which is information gathering right now with chat, GPT, et cetera. And what is, uh, I think, terrific about this administration is rather than taking a defensive stance, they're taking an active participate a participatory role with technology companies looking to, uh, uh, looking to accelerate uh, going forward. And we think it's a wonderful opportunity for society, uh, and we're very much looking forward to working with this administration. Well, what participation have you had specifically with the president on AV? Is that what you use your five minutes for, AV, AV, AV? What, what are you going to push home? Well, the, the president is very busy on many, many uh, global issues right now, but uh, in my communication with him, you know, I will tell you that our drivers and couriers are thrilled about no taxes on tips. Uh, and I think the other area that we're really focused on, you know, Uber is a company that operates in the real world and everyday life. Um, I think one area that we can absolutely help on as it relates is the affordability of these services, uh, inflation for the common customer, the, one of the, uh, the top reasons why you see, let's say, Uber fares go up is actually um, uh, the insurance costs that goes to a bunch of lawyers, et cetera. So we, we do look forward to working with them on AV and then driving affordability through insurance reform as well. Two things. Do you think that you'll get a car vote for tax on tips for Uber drivers? Uh, yeah, well, I think, I, I think the, the, what the president has said is he believes in no taxes on tips generally. Uh, and we think it's a terrific idea, and we will be very, very supportive of that initiative. Let's just square away the inflation question at the moment. You, you, you know, your model is very different to many other businesses. Um, where does inflation play in as a risk? Is that one of the biggest risks that you have on the slate at the moment for 2025? Well, our goal culturally, generally, is to continue to expand our services and affordability of, of our services to all over uh, the countries in which we operate, not just a center of cities, not just the wealthy. Uh, and we want as many dollars that the consumer is paying to go to the drivers. And part of the issue now is with, uh, uh, with, with the inflation you see in insurance, home insurance prices, uh, commercial insurance, car insurance, et cetera, a lot of these dollars are being lost to you know, tort lawyers, et cetera. And we think that with some reform of the system, you can get some uh, you can get some relief there and a higher percentage of the dollars going to the driver base. Is that something you'd actively look at? I got in the Uber this morning. I said, I'm going to speak to the guy that runs your company. What's the one thing that you want to say to him? He said, I'd like a bigger percentage of payout. Course. Of course, why not? He's a, and, he's and, a and, and as we scale, Where can you squeeze that to? Where do you well, realistically think that you can squeeze that to? Well, if you, if you remove insurance, which a lot of it is going to uh, uh, lawyers, et cetera, we, our global take rate is about 20%. And 80% is, is going both insurance and drivers. And the goal is to get as much of that 80% to our drivers, couriers, restaurant partners. Talk to me about my adoption and how quickly I will adopt to an AV car. 15 years ago, I came out of black cabs in London and I never looked back, right? It was an evangelist moment. Here we are. <laughs> well, we have black cabs now on Uber, so maybe you'll begin back into some black cabs. Okay. Adoption for AV. How difficult is it? How frightened are we? What's the holdback? What's the rate? So 
the technology is rapidly moving in the right direction. Uh, you see Waymo's in San Francisco. Yep. Uh, in LA, uh, these are cars that are safer than humans, which is terrific. Uh, and then you're also seeing incredible advancements in China, the Wii Rides of the World, Pony, et cetera. So the te technically, over the past two years, we have seen uh, things move forward at a very, very accelerated pace. The newer technology, large language models or larger models coming in is creating a real opportunity for a second generation of companies to develop this technology at very, very high speed. Now, we build technology for the real world. And just like you see now, the significant investments and in time that it takes, yeah. for example, data, uh, data center infrastructure, we have to build the infrastructure behind AV in order to get mass adoption and scale adoption. And it's going to take a couple of things. One is uh, we need these AVs to be superhuman in terms of safety. There are more than a million fatalities, uh, motor vehicle fata fatalities on, on the, in, in the world. This is an opportunity for us to raise the bar and have these drivers who are superhuman, you see it with Waymo, and I think you're seeing it more and more as these drivers get trained up with our other partners as well. So that's one. Second is we need to align with regulators around the world. Right? The regulations uh, as it relates to AV are not mature. They are at national levels, state levels, city levels as well. And as it relates to the discussion uh, on safety, these are really important dialogue to have with regulators to regulate uh, AVs appropriately. Third, you need the infrastructure. You need uh, depots, cleaning, charging, et cetera. It takes time to establish uh, that infrastructure as well. Fourth, you need the cars. The pace of software change is actually moving faster than the pace of hardware change, and you need scaled vehicles with full redundancy. And then lastly, you need uh, you know, usage of these cars and high utilization of these cars because they're very, yep. very expensive. It will take time, and we're working with industry and regulator, regulators to accelerate that, but we have to do that with care to move forward in the right way, so to speak. So let's break some of that down, because you've got the relationship with, with Waymo. There's one person said to me on the way in, this is a strategic placeholder, and Dara is fundamentally limited by the scale of Waymo. Now, how would you respond to that? Because you're kind of hanging your hat with Waymo. Is it a placeholder? And is it restrictive? It, you know, I don't know what placeholder means, but they are a terrific partner of ours. Uh, right now, we are both heads down, uh, preparing for a launch in Austin and then later in the year in Atlanta. So the teams are working at multiple levels. Their relationship is at, is at multiple levels as well. Uh, and we look forward to really introducing this technology at scale on the Uber network in these cities and hopefully much, much more to come. At the same time, we are working with the ecosystem, right? We don't think that this is going to be a winner-take-all marketplace. Uh, there's a ton of innovation going on uh, outside of the US, uh, and you should expect to see, you know, you already see Ubers, uh, autonomous Ubers in Abu Dhabi, but you will see a continuous expansion of AVs at small scale, hopefully all around the world. But do you want to be dominant number one here in the United States of America? I, I would never describe our position as dominance, uh, but we want to be a big Not to a regulator player. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we we want to be a big player, uh, and, and we are very <laughs> aligned with the development of this ecosystem. It's a trillion plus dollar opportunity. It is an opportunity to make our streets fundamentally safer, and we want to be a leader along with partners uh, like Waymo and other partners in moving this technology forward. Before I ask you whether you're going to do with a deal with Elon, you can chew on that for a moment. But um, the, the infrastructure, I'm curious just to build on that. Um, that's one of the things that you say needs to be in place. How, how much of a headwind is the infrastructure build out to scalability of AV? It, it is definitely, I wouldn't call it a headwind, but it's a restricting factor. Okay. Uh, and the good news for us is that we are already working with fleet partners all around the world as part of our initiative to electrify our fleet. So we are moving uh, to EVs all around the world at about five times the speed of the average uh, driver. Uh, the Uber driver is the driver that you want to move to, to EVs because they're uh, 
they're driving five times the miles. Okay. So the impact on the environment is, is very big. And we're working with thousands of fleet partners all around the world that are uh, moving our fleets over to EVs or providing just vehicles to drivers who can't afford these vehicles. That group of entities is going to be a big part of our moving over to EVs as well. So these are partnerships we have in place, but they're partnerships that we're going to grow to help us invest in the infrastructure needed. So then cast forward to the end of the decade, the percentage of people that are going to book an AV trip. Hey, listen, I think in certain cities around the world, and a lot of it depends on, on regulations, it'll be 20, 30, 40% of volumes, but it will take time to penetrate city after city, state after state, country after country. What about New York? I mean, there's a real ruckus at the moment over, over the, 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 the charge. The committee. congestion pricing. The congestion yeah. pricing. Yeah. How quickly, how, I, how quickly I, will New York I don't think that technology is going to be a limiting factor, although driving in New York is quite a challenge. Challenge. Uh, I think it's really going to be more of a regulatory uh, question there. I mentioned sort of flippantly, you know, a, a potential deal with Elon Musk and, and RoboTaxi. RoboTaxi, we're told, will launch, in theory, th th this year. It does make sense that somebody like you and Elon Musk would co-join and unite behind this, this AV venture. We certainly today. think it makes a ton of economic sense in that what we bring is demand to the AV ecosystem uh, when demand often is, is quite variable. So we're able to have a, call a base load of AV demand. These cars are driving 20, 22 hours a day. And then we're able to complement that with human drivers as well. Uh, we would love to have Tesla's content on the network. There are about 150,000 drivers now who drive Teslas. Two weeks ago, I got into Tesla Uber, and, and he was using FSD. The driver was using mm -hmm. FSD. I asked him, when do you use it? When do you not use it? He's like, it's great. It kind of takes the edge off. Some of his passengers don't like it. Some do. So for us to turn those Teslas into autonomous Teslas when it's superhuman safe would be terrific. Have you had you know? a serious conversation with him? Do you interact with him? Is it one of the parts of the conversation? I've had, had? I've had conversations with him at this point. They want to build it alone. So to some extent, in Austin, we and Waymo will be competing with uh, Tesla uh, when they launch. And, you know, let's see. The life is long, but we would love to partner with them. You have a new activist investor, Bill Ackman. I was joking with you back. Former back activist, he tells us. Former, former act. Well, here you go. You know, he's taken a, bit, a pretty big chunk in you. Do you think you have yeah. a good relationship on Twitter? But on a slightly more serious note, you've got to take somebody quite seriously when they've got a chunk of your company like that. What does he want? What do you think he wants? What have you talked about? Well, I think he wants to make money, like a lot of people. Well, hopefully, in this room, you want to make money you know? too. Yeah, li listen, I think he is. Bill is one of the best investors on Wall Street. Uh, he, Has he given you any kind of indication or plan about what the future together might look like? He likes the direction that we're in, uh, that we're going in. He's been very supportive. He's given me some actually feature tips. He's, Bill's a huge a user tip? of, uh, of Uber. So uh, one <laughs> was he, he wants to be able to uh, pre-tip drivers. Because right okay. now, when you're driving, every single time you have to put a tip. So Bill's a huge user. He's a big investor. Uh, and I think if we keep executing operationally the way that we are, uh, we hope that over a long period of time we can make him a lot of money and the rest of our shareholders a lot of money. We're pretty much out of time. I mean, those, those are great, straight, generic answers, but you are a <laughs> deal maker, extraordinary in your, form, in your former life at Expedia, et cetera. Are you hungry to really do some kind of transformational tech deal? Are you not? Uh, just had lunch. I'm quite full. Thank you. <laughs> would you I, like I would, dessert? I, I would say on a, on a, on a serious note, um, you know, executives learn as well. Expedia was built on, on a number of deals. We have uh, obviously had our share of deals at, at Uber. Yeah. But what's extraordinary about Uber is the amount of innovation and our ability to build organically. We built Uber Eats, which is a you know, tens of billions of dollars, Hello. almost half the business, thank you. Okay. Uh, organically, we're building our grocery and retail business organically. We are building uh, our AV partnerships organically. So I have to go with the strength of the company, and Uber's strength is innovation. It's in the innovation coming from our engineers uh, and, our, and our product folks, and that's the horse I'm going to ride, so to speak, to mix metaphors. Dara Khosrowshahi, thank you very much for the conversation. Thank you.